Hey. Hey, guys. Hey. What's up? That's a literally a lumberjack. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I was doing my little SpongeBob SquarePants cosplay for the first few episodes, and then... You really switched it up really quick. That's me. That's like, me. It's just how fast the night changes. Does it ever drive you crazy? <laughs> yeah. Like, sometimes yeah. it does. I'm definitely going crazy. Um, you think you're going crazy? Are you doing ASMR? You know we have people that don't like the sound of that. It's going to be a moaning episode. Oh, fuck. You look like a ray of sunshine. Thank you. So do you. You're welcome. You're actually giving like emo kid. I'm kind of like, I kind of felt that. Yeah. I'm in love with an emo girl. I don't know what that song is. Isn't that Lil Huddy? Did I make that up? It's Chase. Is it? Chase Hudson. Chase Hudson. I don't know. What's our fun little anecdote for right now? That's not about what we look like or what we're doing. Do I look different? I think I just said, what's our fun little anecdote? That's not about what we look like or what we're doing. <laughs> Actually, the listening comprehension is off the charts. Yeah, no. I always fail that section of an exam. Why? Do you feel different? No. So why'd you ask that? Because. Do you think you look different? No. Do you think I look different? No. Okay. Do you want to look different? No. Are you hoping I said yes? I was just going to see what you said. I think that you look pretty much as is. Okay. <sighs> Good children. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. Is the gods, are the gods in the room? That's right now. Oh, because. Guys, the gods exist. That was beautiful. I like that was the first time where I felt like something happened. The harmony was really right. So beautiful. Yeah. It was like a choir. You were definitely um, doing the thing. Who was that guy in Pitch Perfect? Skylar Aston. You were giving me that. You know, you were definitely giving it like an 11 out of 10. Whip it! I think that, like, why give a 10 out of 10 when. 11 could exist. Hey guys, and welcome back to Good Children, the podcast where hosts Joe Hedges and Andrew Muscarella reflect on her 22 years of friendship, growing up in the late 2000s, early 2010s, and all of the nostalgia, trauma, and Valentine's Day that go along with it. I'm talking so fast. Yeah, no, I, that was took, the fastest I've you ever You took a few sips of your, your mate and you I had like jumped. a triple latte. Oh, I had no caffeine today. Oh, that's nuts. I'm capped up. You're double, you're triple capped, you're quadruple capped. I'm capped. quadruple capped up, capped yeah. up, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, but I felt like it was a special occasion. I should get really high on caffeine and sit down with my closest friends. Friend and, and like talk about Valentine's Day. Which and, like, is one love. of my, has always been. Your favorite holiday. Always been my favorite holiday. I have now said that about Halloween, about Halloween. Christmas, yes. and now Valentine's and Day. And I'm sure once Easter comes rolling around. Give, I've never given enough. You're going to be hip hopping fuck. in your way no to say it's your favorite way. fucking holiday. No, I've never fucking liked Easter and Thanksgiving. You know that I've gone on record many times. But Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day. Um, we're we're going to be talking about a lot we, of things. What are we talking about today? I mean, like, since Valentine's Day is the overarching theme, that's basically what we're going to be talking about. But I will say that we're going to be talking about Valentine's Day through the years. We're going to be oh talking about it from elementary to middle to high to adult. And let's just say, I mean, maybe my perspective is it has only gotten darker, but yours might be a different perspective and that's literally fine i think that like we're both gonna bring a unique perspective to the holiday and i think that we're both gonna really learn we're gonna leave we're gonna leave the studio today different people for me it's about like the candy hearts it's about the colors i love the colors of valentine's day i love always a red. have love a pink i love red and pink i love um I mean, you can bring in whites you can bring in blacks you can bring in everything you're kind of hitting on every single color i mean valentine's day too like it's like to the candy heart point, it's like, it's a huge dessert holiday. And you know I have a sweet tooth. I know, it is crazy because it is like made up. You know, it's not yeah. like, the, I mean, every holiday has like been commercialized, but I think Valentine's Day literally is just to sell shit. There's nothing behind that date. St. Valentine, but like Saint who Valentine. really gives a fuck? We only give a fuck about Cupid. Like, and Valentine's Day is not like a Catholic holiday. You know what I mean? It's not like it became this thing. Mm -mm. Yeah, Cupid. Cupid. Have you ever what? been struck by Cupid's arrow? I don't think I've been, maybe in elementary school, I thought I was you struck. struck. I thought I, I got was pierced through the heart. Oh my God. But ever since, no. But the thing is, like, 
the way that Cupid did have a chokehold, he had his Cupid shuffle on me. You know what I mean? Oh my god. It was genuinely like, yeah, Cupid's gonna shoot his arrow and I'm gonna feel yeah, like I was waiting. <laughs> I was waiting on. I was searching on every corner, hoping, every corner, hoping and praying for that diaper baby. Mm-hmm. So we get into our first category. Yeah, let's then. do it. Okay, number one is elementary school. I immediately would be remiss not to bring them up, Valentino. They're in the room with us. Yeah, they're in the room with us. And like, thank you, Valentino. Like, you honestly, it's a podcast between me and you and Valentino. Valentino has been here since like episode ten. Valentino is a webkins noob with tags, love frog. They are not my original love frog. Nope. Who, I don't know what happened to any of my webkins. But I remember calling up every Walgreens, Rite Aid, Stewart Pharmacy, mm. Hallmark. Um, were you, were you just a little, were you calling? And that, I'm, what I'm saying is like, that's a really big deal coming from you. You were calling our assistant principal. Oh my God, in elementary school. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were. Principal. Principal. Yes, he was literally... He was a Webkinz dealer. He was a Webkinz dealer, and my mom would meet him after school and say, do you know where to get the cheeky monkey? And he would say, they have him at Genko. Remember Genko on Broadway? I do remember Genko on Broadway, they but had like, what? Web- what? Why? Because he had two kids. He had two daughters. Oh, and he decided, he was like, I'm going to make sure that I know where every single one yeah, is. Yeah, so he was on the hunt oh. for them, just like my mom was on the hunt for them, and like they really collabed a few times on like, like, yeah, like, why was the principal, why was the vice principal, like... Meeting me after school to give me webkins. Yeah, like, I know. Like, <laughs> like from an outsider's perspective, it sounds a little bit creepy. But I got my cheeky monkey. You got it. But yeah, Valentino, <sighs> this is the perfect example of everything I love. And I had a revelation last night. What was it about? Gone. I don't know. You know, I've always been like a plushy. Yeah, you love to like rest your head against something like very plush. Yeah, I've always loved a stuffed a animal. Thing. And like the fact that he has these purple and red hearts and this pink body and this joyful smile, this expressive face. Yeah, look at him. He almost kind of looks like you. Almost like a lot. In the face. You think that my face looks exactly like that love frog? Okay, you know what? <laughs> Fuck you. Because it's, it was, what was it last week? A hamster. A hamster? Two weeks ago, yeah. Two weeks ago? A hamster? Now I'm the love frog? Do you What's see? Next? Listen, what I'm saying is. I love that you can has, see my face in things. That's what I'm saying. That's sweet. I see your face everywhere I go. Oh, you know? that's really kind. That soft smile. And he has those like very, those curved lips like you. That's your favorite feature about yourself. Those pink lips. Those pink lips. And then he has these gorgeous little doe eyes and he has this like look at those eyebrows look at his eyebrows very similar to yours very, very similar, similar to, to mine yeah you kind of see yeah. it now i kind of see it and he has just like a very nice stance to him yes he's I don't talk, i'm not talking about his whole figure here i'm just talking about the face but overall he does give me he feels he's like a little up. you yeah Aww. oh especially young you young elementary me. school you anyway the love frog is exuding love it could bring you that that little that moment joy. when you're a kid, that joy yes. that you needed and on that holiday. that's what freaked me out last night. Because I was thinking about that Lunar New Year decoration of the bunny with the furry face that mm-hmm. I posted to my Instagram story. It's now my phone background. And I was like, this bunny, this bunny doesn't exist to start to do anything but provide a, a brief, a brief moment of joy, joy. in someone's life. And, and that's that all joy. that bunny exists to do. Mm-hmm. And then it's tossed in the trash. Us. And I was like, that's beautiful. Yeah. And then I was thinking about my webkins and I was like, I've they existed just the sole purpose was to spark joy. And to feel comfort. Yes. And to feel good. And that's all they that's why I think I do love a stuffed animal. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to be more like that. I just want to spark joy and be tossed in the trash. Yeah. That's my goal. Be tossed in the trash. Toss me in the trash when you're done enjoying this me. This Valentine's Day, toss Joe in the trash. All he wants is a little bit of joy. I think it's actually beautiful. It, is beautiful. it really is beautiful. Aww. It is. But yeah, the love puppy. Speaking of Valentine's Day, the, the love, coveted love puppy. If the... you if you grew up with a love puppy, Webkins, I don't want to hear shit. You I had wanna, a good child. You knew no strife. You yeah. knew no worry. We don't want to hear You were financially it. abundant. You, yeah, were you were doing well. You could do anything you wanted. And I don't, I will never have no. the same amount of respect for you that I have for those without the love because puppy. Because you know what? For you or for anybody else that didn't have the love puppy, you needed to withdraw your love for that person because they already had enough love coming from that damn dog. Yeah. I do want to talk about 
obviously the elephant in the room, which is Valentine's Day Eve. What the hell? Valentine's Day Eve. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You're running to the store. You're getting the damn little candy hearts. You're getting those lollipops. You're getting anything that had a little card from it with a to and from and a little message so you can write them out. Do you remember like what the cards you loved the most were at that age? I think that they probably were like a Disney centered card. Yeah. They had the Disney Channel kids on them. They did right? have some of those. They had like a high, definitely a high school musical yeah. one, definitely a Hannah Montana one. I remember having a Lord of the Rings one one year. That was that's crazy. For me that was very horny. Yeah, that was very horny. That was very mask of you. Well, you know I yeah, I was in love with Legolos. Yeah. So of course. So you were handing them out and like what like what do you think it like probably said? Probably like my pre- you're my precious this year, you know. <gasps> Oh, that's, I can only assume. I can only assume that's like a sweet. picture of Gollum. Yeah, that's sweet. I just, I do agree with you that it is an intense day. The level of hand cramping, the level of stress, the stress. anxiety of writing out those cards, and everyone is stressed. Everyone yeah. in your family has to be stressed because, again, the stress that you're exuding as the child that's going to be yes. handing them out. If one thing went wrong, oh, game over. You're a laughing stock of if the you, school. If you don't have enough cards. If you don't have enough cards. If you don't have enough cards, like, what do you do? You have to not show up. You're like, hey, Chelsea, like, I totally forgot. I think I would probably, like, sacrifice my closest friends. I'd be like, yeah. you don't need this. Yeah. But, like, these people need this. Like, yeah. you know I love you. They- <laughs> <laughs> you know I love you, and these people need just a little bit of extra yeah, love that comes they- through a card this mm-hmm. year. Yes. Someone, I think Sadie and Julia messaged us, and we're talking about, like, the strife of being such a good child. I forgot this was even a thing until I read their DMs where if you were like a really good kid, sometimes your teacher would like place you next to like the kids who needed some extra attention, like the bad kids or the kids who were like a little bit concerning. Yeah. And like, that was also a theme throughout this kind of time of year where like, I felt like I had an extra responsibility mm-hmm. to be a buddy not a bully to uplift to the weirdos kids. yeah as if i was not the one i was probably the one being placed next to yeah. someone you're like why am i they're like hey joe how's your day you're like good <laughs> yeah. um yeah no i do think that like the level yeah the level of honestly throwing autographs like your taylor swift yes. for those yeah and then the pressure the following day you've already built your mailbox yeah you're like you built your mailbox you are walking in there saying to yourself, do I have some of the best treats today? Oh. Mm-hmm. You're very competitive and comparative. I've, al- comparative. I've always been double seed up. Yeah. Com- competitive and comparative is a really good way to put it. Yeah. Because sure. I don't think I was thinking like that. Yeah, I know. I was. I was like, I can't make an embarrassment of myself. Who do you think was going to be embarrassed? How would you think you were going to get embarrassed? Like if I didn't have, I don't know. It's, it's something that I'm still working through. Mm. To this mm. day. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're not taking a dark about this not episode. Yet, not yet. That's for Patreon. No, I'm going to take a dark here later. Oh, later. Yeah. Oh, for sure. How could it not? How could it not go dark? It's Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yeah, you walk into that room. It's fourth grade. Mm-hmm. You're eyeing everyone up and down. You're like, oh, I wonder who my Valentine's going to be this year. I wonder how many Valentines I'm going to get. Like, am I loved? Mm-hmm. Am I loved? Am I beloved? Do my peers look at me? As not me. only an authority figure, but, but as their also lover. a lover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Because I did need to be both at mm-hmm. that age. Like, I was like, I'm in charge. Yeah. You guys, Miss Dostiana wants you to be quiet, and she's not going to keep going until we all quiet down. So, yeah. Shh, shh, Andrew. Shh. And I was like, wait. <laughs> I think I love you. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, you had that that moment. Again, the melt. The- it was like a five minutes. Yeah, it was so brief. It was not even a big part of the day. And nope. yet, it's burned into my brain. Mm-hmm. It's distributing Valentine's. Mm-hmm. And you walk home with your bag of treats. What happens in between? What do you, you mean? You just skip the whole distribu- distribution? No, you're just you're distributing them. You're putting them in the mailboxes. It depends. It depends. I think they got creative with the mailboxes as we went on. But there were some classes that didn't have any organization, and we were just dropping them on desks. You're kidding. I feel like Swear every year I was doing a little art project a few days Swear beforehand. To you. Sometimes we had a bag. I was doing like a tissue box. You like were making the tissue, tissue box, box. And then you were wrapping it in like a construction paper and decorating it for Valentine's Day. 
I mean, in a few classes, did we do that in Dacianos? I don't remember a thing about fourth grade except I don't getting married. I remember a thing about Alexa. elementary school. <laughs> I did get married in fourth grade. Me and Alexa Torrens. Do you remember that? On the little mon- on the parallel bars in the playground. Who officiated it? Was it not you? It had to be. Was it not you? You could tell me anything from fourth grade, and I'd say it was me. <laughs> yeah, so exactly. So you better, you better say it. I'll okay. never forget. We walked down the aisle. She walked down the aisle, and we fully had a, mar- a wedding ceremony. You, you hugged? I do think so. We both did it with that. So official. You know what I mean? Yeah. We were both like, this is camp. Yeah. Um, which was always great about Alexa. Yep. I think she was always in on the joke. She was. But that was a moment. That was a romance. There was a year. romance there. Yeah. I, I mean, this has nothing to do with that, but talking about weddings in kindergarten, I will say the one vivid memory I do have is that we did have dress up time and I'll never live it down because no. I'm the one that chose the wedding dress and I fully wore it. There was like a little wedding dress um, uh, costume and I was the one that wore it. But Valentine's Day, the lovers. Wait, I can't believe you were wearing school. a wedding dress though. Yeah, in kindergarten. I, I was doing, I've been doing drag since the day you were born. Since the day I was born. Yeah. The day I was born. And Linda Calamari is coming soon. Linda I feel Calamari. her. I literally feel her It's brewing. like Godzilla. Like I can feel her like stomping towards <laughs> us every day. I'm like, holy shit, what is that in the air? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what years did you have a Valentine in I had a school? Well, I had a girlfriend. I had Sam yeah. from kindergarten through fifth grade. So all, you had it locked and loaded for the entire elementary school. All of elementary school, I was I was wiped up, yeah, and that's crazy. Yeah, that's just who I am. That's you just, like, yeah, you had like a different aura about you, I guess. Yeah, it was always like you guys like you guys might be single, but like <laughs> you could like have your fun and be single, but like I'm in a relationship. Yeah, and it was yeah, it was the longest relationship of my entire life from kindergarten to fifth grade. That was six years. Six years. Holy shit. And imagine not having the pressure to feel like you need to ask someone to be your Valentine because you already knew. Also, like, the fucking pressure off of having to, like, worry about seeming gay. Yeah. Like, Sam gave me a big favor for those years. Yeah, she did. She really was like, I'll be your beard. It's so messed up that you had a Valentine's. I was asking every single year a different girl. Oh One year God. was Jamie. One year was Leanne. I don't know if you Your remember cousin? Leanne. No, not my cousin. There's more than just one Leanne in the world. But Leanne, love you. She then transferred schools. She moved. It was After you it, asked her out. Yeah, because like I would have to ask her out, and like I obviously would have to plan it out. So it would probably be like February first, and I'm like, hey Leanne, like <clears throat> Valentine's Day is in two weeks. Like you want to be my Valentine? And thank God she said yes. But did she have brown hair? She did. She was like always dressed like a brat stall. No. Yeah. And then fourth grade. Fourth grade came around. Who was fourth grade for you? Mm-hmm. Fourth yeah. grade I asked to be my Valentine. And she said And she said no. no. She, she said, looked no. me in the face and she said no. To your face? To my face, she said. Did she laugh? No. Or she was she like it was no. yeah. That, that's <laughs> even worse. Like I wish she left because it was like a oh no, no. <laughs> I won't. And like and I was like okay no like it's literally don't even worry about it. that's totally fine like you don't have my Valentine like I don't even care and I obviously cared but the fourth grade was a year that I didn't have a Valentine I didn't get one oh damn that damn sucks. and I think that's kind of what set set me on the next the next spiral like of 20 years probably. of probably i guess it wouldn't be 20 years of my life i guess like how old 18 was I? years of your life nine plus i would say like yeah around 17 16 <laughs> okay years of my life um of just <laughs> all because feeling of that, that rejection mm-hmm. i think i never got over that yeah see i never in my entire life asked someone out ever in my entire life like to this day yeah except on like Hinge, but like that's when you know that you know that's not really asking someone out. No, because if I ask someone on Hinge and they say no, I'd be like, okay, I'll go kill myself. <laughs> You're like, okay, bye. <laughs> I thought we were both alive. I've never ever done that. Good for you. Yeah, that was no, brave. I, I definitely had a lot of confidence in elementary school until so she stripped it away from me. It's a shame. It's okay because you're like, really blaming this woman. <laughs> no, I'm not going to blame women because if I've learned anything. It's that you're a misogynist. Yes. 
No. No. <laughs> No, literally no. Caught. Literally no, because you're gonna edit that, and I know just it's cut gonna, it right gonna cut it right at no. Yes, it's that you're a misogynist. Yes, I remember I have the video, and it's actually I think one of my one of the most embarrassing videos I have to this day that fills me with a cringe is me maybe in like fourth grade, fifth grade mm-hmm. singing. Oh, you're old. Okay, <laughs> I mean, it is fourth or fifth grade, and I am singing "Beautiful Soul" by Jesse McCartney. For Sam for Valentine's Day. I don't want another pretty face. I don't want just anyone to hold. I don't want my love to go to waste. I don't want you and your beautiful soul. You're the one I want to chase. Oh my gosh, yeah. that's really sweet. It is really, looking back, it was really sweet, but like for <sighs> the years between then and now, like I would see that video, like those video files in the archive and be like, I have to delete these. Thankfully, I never did, and they're still there. And those pipes, you know, I could really sing. I'm- when you're beautiful, so. Oh, I'm. I have no doubt, and I also like. Thank you for bringing up Jesse McCartney's "Beautiful Soul" because I do think that is a song that has held a constant throughout your life, my life. Really? No, I just think that that song, like we were singing it, what in third fourth fifth grade one of those with those lyrics yeah i don't want another pretty pretty face face. i don't want just anyone to hold hold. i don't want want my love love to go to waste i I want want you you and your beautiful soul soul. yay honestly like that bridge the am i crazy that was crazy it was a really good song yeah and then he was on young and hungry what was that? I don't know, but he did a good job on it. I did enjoy him in Young and Hungry. He's He's been all over the place. He has. But that song, great lyrics, He's a foot fetish. He used to tweet, like, show me your what feet. What do you mean? He used to tweet, like, literally, like, Foot Friday. The way like, that I would have... No, <laughs> no, sitting in stop. Your feet. I would, when, I, when I'm sending Jesse, Jesse McCartney, McCartney my feet, toes. <laughs> the next DM I do to a celeb is Jesse <laughs> McCartney in my feet pics. He's going to be like... What are you doing? No. Um, oh. Yeah, I guess that sums up elementary school. I think it was a time. It was a time of like Valentine's Day was still fun. Yeah. It was still a magical holiday for me personally. Yeah. I almost forgot about Valentino. Um, everything just felt like a little bit pretty and like a little bit glowy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was so much to celebrate in your. Stop. Like your parents would, you would come home, your parents would have a little chocolate. And I don't know about you, but my mom always made heart shaped ravioli. Oh, I love that. She always made the heart shaped ravioli. ravioli. I'm still oh. getting Valentine's Day gifts from my parents. Middle school is where things started to get real, I feel Were like. Were you ready Valentine's to? Day. I was ready to. Long nap. I was ready to long nap off the side of the building, but like seeing other people in love, (laughs) experience love for the first time. Yeah. Was hard to, a hard pill to swallow. We're quite fortunate that neither one of us had that experience. No. You know what I mean? I would say fortunate's the word. (laughs) (laughs) I mean that like that one of us didn't and the other one, you know, I think it was great for us. If I had to see you. Yeah. No. Yeah, it'd be really tough for us. I it think. would be really tough. And I think that maybe in a way that we, that we were each other's like comfort, we held each other back from living like that. But oh, I yeah. think that maybe that was also for the best. You know what I mean? Oh, I look I look back at those times and I'm like, yeah, I should have felt alone. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, thank God I felt really alone and ugly and unlovable. Like, yeah, that was for the best. It was for the best. And honestly, I'm very fortunate for those experiences. So thank you. <laughs> they made me who I am today. Yes. And this is who I am. Mm-hmm. Middle school, it was definitely the first time where I was like, people have boyfriends, people have girlfriends, like people are dating. People are starting to hug. People, people are, are holding hugging. hands. People are kissing. Some people were kissing. And what were we doing? Yeah, you, we were doing the love frog. I well, oh, I didn't mean it like that. But the amount of times on this podcast you say you fucked an inanimate object goes beyond the the normal amount. But, like, I need to ask the listeners if they even believe that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because, like, who knows? You're right. It is. I mean, it's all comedy. It's none all of this is true. None, none of the, anything that we've said is that. None, none of it's true. We've never. 
I we just met. know what happened yesterday. We met again. We met at a screen test a year ago. We did a chemistry test. Our reads were great together. And, and this, all these damn pictures, you guys are AI. Yeah, the, the obviously. Hell? Yeah, of course. course. Of course. So, like, I guess the one thing, the one thing that brought us joy, probably, I would say, about Valentine's Day. I'm wearing a belly shirt right now. No, I've been seeing your belly. Why didn't you tell me? Joe, it hasn't it's been like, like out, out. like this the whole time, and you no. didn't say anything. No, I haven't like been like I've been like seeing your belly here and there when you move your leg, but I don't think that's like of of concern. My full button was unbuttoned, and my belly button was. Visible. I mean, you're giving like lumberjack. But I was realness. sitting like this just now. You're telling me. Yeah, there was and like a little bit of stomach, like this much stomach, and you did not say Joe button your shirt. I'm not. I'm sorry. I'm not looking down at your stomach. The you just said time. you've been seeing my belly. Yeah, but every time you move your leg, that's fucking nuts. That's crazy shit. I need a producer in here because I can't. I can't do that alone. You know, I need someone to say Joe, you're un. You don't feel the literal air against your damn stomach. No, I need someone to tell me that I'm naked on camera. You know, hmm. that's pretty fucking crazy. Hmm. Anyway. Anyways. Talk about Russell Stover. <laughs> um, I guess like something that. <laughs> I guess like. <laughs> despite the fact that it was a really dark time in middle school. Yeah. Like something. <laughs> used to it. Honestly, despite the fact that it was dark in middle school, I will say, as Joe was crying, sobbing, I will say something that did, was a blessing in disguise, was Mr. or Mrs. Stover. Stover. Russell Stover. Um, they had the, (laughs) they had the big boxes, they had the small boxes, they had the little hearts, they had the big hearts, they had it all. Mm Mm-hmm. What are you laughing at? I actually can't. I actually can't contain myself in this moment. I think it was the eruption into trying to go back <laughs> into the topic. Tried to act. I am someone who's had a fair amount of sugar in my life. Oh, for sure. And to this day, consume more sugar than one person should be consuming. Yeah. But Valentine's Day, you give me a Russell Stover's heart, that's gone in seconds. What are you going for first? Let's say it together. One, two, three. Milk, milk chocolate, chocolate caramel. caramel. I was gonna say caramel. I, I really knew you were. was. I but knew you, you were. threw me off with milk chocolate. I know. I should have just said the caramel. I was. Yeah. I was always going for a caramel first. Mm-hmm. The marshmallow situation. The marshmallow. And sometimes they had the coconut. Yeah, you know that we differ on that. I know. Okay. We're I know. I liked. I the strawberry cream. Where does that land for you? Strawberry cream is always at the top. It's fine. I mean, like the thing is, there's not there's not a Russell Stover. I have it. Mm-hmm loved i have yeah. a, i'll say one thing sometimes there's the caramel and sometimes they switch it up on you with that nougat nougat yeah you're pulling for hours it's, it's honestly a horrible, horrible experience horrible yeah it's a miracle we're here today from that i like i don't know why the people at the stove the stovers the stovers family have, the stovers family the have stover figured estate. that out the yeah. stover estate have not figured that <laughs> they out. need to really work on that because I do think it's like we could, there's like sometimes almost too many flavors too. Mm-hmm. It's like, let's pair it down to the top four. Yeah. That's where you get the small little heart. They only have four in there. That's, I want more. That's the thing. You want more <laughs> I of want the like four. I want 60 of, of the, the four. same four. I agree. Because I don't like too much variety in my life. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not the type of person I am. No, when I it think. it comes l- to my candy heart. And like, let there's always a damn oh, map. Here we go. Why is the there map, a map of the, the chocolates? The map is also... You couldn't be a cartographer and read that map. It is beyond <laughs> average comprehension. Like, like It's either at the bottom of the b- container. So you have like to f- lift it up damn, and then guess. Yeah. Or it's, it's like... like you I'm needed like, a oh, it's, longitude and latitude. I need a left and right. Because you're literally like... Least. Yeah. Top left, that one should be the orange cream. cream. And then it's a fucking coconut. And then it's coconut. You're like, what the heck? Yep, I'm gagging. I'm so pissed. It is insane. Like, that is something else to bring up to the Stover estate. Is like, how can we effectively differentiate these flavors Mm -hmm. and make it more accessible to a mass market? Because it is difficult. It's really hard. Especially when you're a child and you're just trying to sneak a few extra ones Mm -hmm. in in the kitchen without anyone else noticing. Mm -hmm. Are you a shame eater? Did you eat in shame? What do you mean? I, I think I can say you did. Like... I would, like, go into the kitchen and, like, really quietly open a bag of chips and, like, 
Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And oh like, yeah. So to this day, Joe, yes, yeah. so we're both shame eaters. I know that you're feeling shame when mm-hmm. I'm asleep, and I'm asleep, like, yeah. And you, and you have you open that little cabinet. All I hear is a little crinkle, and like, like a. <laughs> And then within like literally 35 seconds, it's closed and put back in the cabinet. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're we're shaming shaming the entire box of Valentine's Day chocolates. And be like, where next morning? Where the chocolates go? Every chocolate company does need to have the little minis in a box because Mm -hmm. when you have, when you've perfected the minis in the box for Valentine's Day, you can do anything. 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 anything and i think russell stover has shown us that i think the whitman sampler has also shown us that and now there's other companies trying to get up in the mix and but, sure you know what why not and but, i'm willing to pay i'm willing to pay russell stover has capped on the market of the the cheaper chocolate mm-hmm. for the most that you're getting but i'll pay tony yeah. i feel like in middle school like it got dark because it was like i'm an adult now you yeah. know, like I'm an adult. Mm-hmm. I'm nearing the prime of my life. Yeah. And I don't have anyone to love. I don't have anyone to love because, again, it's a period of your life where in middle school, you're not really receiving those candy grams from, from friends. No. Candy grams, you're not receiving anything, anything. from those classmates. So no. you're like, Does how can I me? validate my love? But yeah, how could you go on right. not feeling like anyone really wanted to love you? <laughs> it's time for. High school. school. Yes. yes. I had my first Joe Valentine in high school, Sarah Gallo. She was baking, she was cooking, she was doing everything. Sarah did it all, yeah. She was like the perfect girlfriend, and you honestly just got another few years to just be like, I'm straight. <laughs> <laughs> um, me and Sarah started dating junior year, and I remember for Valentine's Day, she got me a Bob Dylan record, which has anything ever sounded cooler in your entire life no. like isn't that kind of like like royal was actually it like yeah. royal was the moment oh, oh god Dylan. like i was like wait this is crazy it was like bringing it all back home and i was like this is such a sick gift to receive um You're like thanks babe i was like wait slay <laughs> um, and then sarah i got sarah a build a bear to bring it back to build a bear oh. and her hair sarah has curly hair and she dyed it red I really pressured her too, I will say, because I was obsessed with Brave. Mm. <laughs> and I was obsessed with Merida at this point. And she was like, should I dye my hair? And I was like, red. Immediately, you should go red. And then she did. And it looked amazing. And then, coincidentally, Build a Bear at that point had released a Merida, Merida bear? doll or something. Like, okay. bear, yeah. And it, like they sell wigs, so they had the wig of the red curly hair. So I got Sarah, honestly, a love puppy if you will. It was a dog with hearts. And yeah. I styled it with a wig. Styled it with a wig. And just like dressed it up a little bit. It was cute. It was a moment. It was absolutely the gayest gift someone could a straight a straight boy could ever possibly give their girlfriend. Yeah. Like but I, I mean was it was like, she's thoughtful. A doll. You know what I mean? I think On I her really end, wanted probably, to build a bear. You absolutely wanted to put a heart in that bear and like yeah. do a little spin or and something. I spun. And I like, spun. Yeah, you were spinning. For sure. I didn't have a, a specific person in high school. I haven't had a Valentine since I was rejected in fourth grade. And that's just the truth. But. You haven't had a Valentine. I've never had a Valentine. No. Let's get into it. Okay. <laughs> Although I guess Jesse was my Valentine. Oh, thank God you. Thank God you. But. On that. But. We can, we can get into it. But that was the year that I skipped Valentine's Day. I wasn't even there. I think we should get right into it. Okay. The year that you skipped Valentine's Day. So the year that I skipped Valentine's Day actually was the year that I actually was in a relationship with Jesse. And it was also February 13th was the day that I was leaving to go to Australia. And I was not landing until the 15th. So I was in the air for the 14th. So I had my hands dry. I didn't have to worry about Valentine's Day that year. That was a crazy year. I skipped it. I that skipped is it. almost really dark. It's really dark. It's really dark. I'm pretty sure I probably texted her when I got, I landed. I hope. Or I, yeah, I definitely texted I her. I hope that you did. Did I send, Jesse, did I send you something? You better have. 
Did I order like maybe some flowers? If you didn't, like, I'm I'm glad that she's not married to you. Drew. Yeah, but besides Jesse, like, and again, I've never experienced Valentine's Day in person with somebody right. before. It's always been with the girls, oh. um, or the friends. That's but yeah, so normal. It's so normal. It's so normal. It's literally the most, most normal. normal. And I do remember, though, in high school, what we did senior year was drive to... Actually, I drove to McDonald's, and I sat there, and we ordered four of the 20-piece Chicken McNugget with fries, and I went back to Trisha's house, and we just ate them, but the thing is about a 40-piece or an 80-piece Chicken McNugget, they don't come easy, and they don't come cheap. Oh, my God. You fronted some money? mm Mm-hmm. I fronted money. I waited about an hour for the nugs and they had to bring them to my car oh that's the worst the most humiliating <laughs> experience of your life yeah is when you're ordering at a drive through and they say can you pull the spot one and they went to my school it was <laughs> i don't know if you know <laughs> but it, i was like you which ordered, one of us is worse here you ordered no you're not no, gonna say that yeah no but i mean she was working on valentine's day it she was making she, money you were right. ordering 80 mcnuggets yeah you're right you went to a McDonald's, ordered 80, 80 McNuggets, McNuggets on and Valentine's then, Day. Yeah. And then a girl from my school walked it out, dropped it into my car, and said, have a great Valentine's Day. And it was just me in the car. <laughs> so she thought I ordered 80 McNuggets. <laughs> I wish. I, w- I literally wish I ordered 80 McNuggets. Yeah. The note we have here for Valentine's Day for high school is... In qu- it's quote unquote oh. feeling literally worthless, feeling like shit, want to kill myself, <laughs> hate my life, fuck this, dates, kill, 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 kill self. Moving on from high school into college years, mm-hmm. like every other holiday, no matter what you celebrate, there's the, the the main theme is usually family, which can also really fuck people up. Obviously, yeah. if you have a twisted relationship with family, but usually like there's someone in your life in those situations like your chosen family like Mm. someone who you get to be with valentine's day really does set you up to be miserable miserable because it also it's kind of like new year's resolutions in a sense of you're like by next valentine's day i'm gonna have a boyfriend yes and i've been saying that for Literally, literally years. I'm life. still saying it. I'm still texting Jill, being like, "Who do you have on the docket? Because you're gonna have someone on Valentine's Day." We're both being crazy, but that's that's the pressure sometimes that Valentine's Day can put on you because you're like, "I don't, I don't want to be lonely." Yeah, you don't want to be lonely. This is an amazing plug for our web series. It is. Actually, it is. So last year on Valentine's Day, we released Lonely, which is a four-part web series. You can watch it on YouTube. I can't bottom. I had chicken parmesan for breakfast. I have seen you bottom after three fribbles and a mozzarella stick platter. I think you'll be fine. Wrote it and shot it in four weeks, edited it in two weeks, and released it on Valentine's Day. Last Valentine's Day was crazy. It was actually just me and you. Yeah. And... There were tears. Yeah, there were tears. And we were both wearing shirts that said lonely on them. Stop. Yeah, we were sitting on this couch. Ooh. Ooh. I think that Valentine's Day can be fun. Yeah. And can just be what it is if you don't worry so much about not having something. It's just another day. day. And it's about what you have and who you are and And not what what you you lack. Yeah. Like, yeah, you have so much love. It's in abundance, regardless if it's friends, if it's family, if it's your boyfriend, it's your girlfriend, it's if your it's anybody, dog. if it's your little, it's your if two it's cats. your little dog, if it's that meal that you made yourself. Yeah, everything is a labor Could be your of love. Own Valentine, like truly, everything. And then you have a Valentine's this year. I do have a Valentine this year, and I'm so excited. That's really nice. Yeah, I do too. You do. Everyone does. Everyone does. Because if you don't have one, you have us. It, you don't and if you don't have Joe, well, you definitely do have Joe too, but you really have. Don't me. do that. No, you have us. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You have both of us. You have both of us this Valentine's Day. Like, literally, yeah. you don't have. We should honestly, like, I don't want to delay. What? We should release something on Valentine's Day. I almost think what we do, we're like, if you have nothing else to do, you're going on a date with us. We could honestly sit down and perform a date. Yeah. 
and like get to know each other. Yeah. Like that's something I would want. Like if you're like, it's actually funny. Yeah, it is. It's like a chicken shop date. Yeah. We basically just do that. Yeah, we can do that. And that's like 30 minutes uncut. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Right? Yeah. That feels like an efficient use of time and like people will watch it. Yeah. If you don't have a Valentine, if you don't have plans, you can also maybe, maybe something. So maybe you want to date with us. Day. Maybe you can maybe, go on a date with us. Maybe you're going to see what that's like. On 14th. Yeah. We'll see what's wrong with both of us. <laughs> um, you see where I would get ghosted. <laughs> I can't wait to find out. Yeah. I never talked about my acapella experience. I don't really have to. Were you like singing? I was singing. People were paying five. People were paying five dollars. Were they bullying you? No, Joe. Not me. People were like, we want you to come and sing to my friends. People were mortified. We would walk into the room. We were in suits. And I'd start singing. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you. Tomorrow I'll miss you. No? You don't, that, you don't think that people were paying you guys to do that to make the person who's receiving it feel uncomfortable? So oh. In that way, like, kind of using you to bully? Yeah, for one, for, for sure. sure. Two, we made $5 a song. You know what I mean? And we used that money. Okay. For, like, for promotional... No, because we weren't buying socks. We wanted to get like um, uniforms, did but we, get them? it never worked out. Oh, no. so you didn't use the money? No, the money did go towards things. Something. I wasn't the treasurer. Okay. Were you? I think I was. <laughs> <laughs> Good children down to the guidance office. Hey guys. Hey. Welcome to the guidance office. Oh. Um, thank you, Sadie and Julia. Our question today is, I am 24 years old and have never been in a relationship, let alone had a Valentine. What should I do if I'm alone on Valentine's Day? Oh, you're asking the we right wouldn't know. people? No, you're right. Joe, we wouldn't know because we don't do, we're not alone on Valentine's Day. We've never been alone on Valentine's Day. But if we had to assume what you should do, we can give you some pointers. We can give you some pointers. And I almost think we can give them in a really concise format. Yeah, I agree. Number one, unplug. Get off the damn phone. Get off the phone because you know what's wor- nothing worse than? Seeing, seeing people, people happy. happy. You no. don't need to see it. It's not seeing people happy. It's, it's seeing people happy. I guess it is seeing people happy, but it's, uh, yeah. Because why would I care? Why right. would I care that they're posting? I don't give a fuck other? that you're happy and you're, that you're, you've been in a relationship for seven years. Stop posting about it. I don't want to see you kiss. No. This year... Me, I'm yeah. the most fucking. I can't stop posting. Yeah, yeah. no, it's gonna be it's gonna be gross. <laughs> Number two, order in or cook yourself a nice meal. That's the truth. Because if you're ordering in, get the restaurant that you normally wouldn't go go for. Or if yeah. you're cooking that meal, make something decadent, decadent, delicious, and maybe a little bit expensive. Treat yourself the way you want to be treated. You know what I mean? Treat yourself with love. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Because you don't need a man nope. to treat, your, treat you with love. You uh, have to treat yourself with love. All the time. Because what, if, you, if you can't love yourself, how, how the, the hell are you going to love, love someone else? Yeah, come on. Um, number three, hang out with your girlies. Whatever that may mean. You have a single friend. Like, I don't care what you say. Like, you might have some of your friends might be in relationships. There's someone who also is doing nothing tonight who would love to spend time with love. you. Love. And make those plans now, you know, like mm-hmm. get into writing that you're going to see someone so you're not like, you don't spiral a little bit because I've absolutely spiraled on Valentine's Day. Oh, for sure. Um, number four, my favorite, buy a cute little stuffed animal. You love a stuffed animal. Yeah, just hold on to something. Get a cute little, like go to like Dwayne Reed, go to CVS and buy one of those little bears. Stop. Like you deserve to give yourself a gift. Yeah. Because. Always. You're your Valentine. Mm-hmm. Number five, watch a movie. And drink some wine and be your own Valentine. Get a box of, of Russell, Russell Stover's. Stover's. I'm gonna reach out to Russell Stover and say, We have we have big news for you. <laughs> this is gonna be your best Valentine's Day yet. Your market's you an all time high. <laughs> you guys needed it. And everyone's getting Russell Stover's this yeah, year. Yeah, it's true though. Like put on something fun. It could be a it could be a love story. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. It could be the Hunger Games. Yeah, that's the thing. It doesn't have if what's triggering to you is that you're not in a relationship and a love story is gonna send you spiraling. Skip choose it. the complete opposite. Yeah, be your own Valentine this year. Like literally, who literally gives a fuck? We are all gonna die do you know what i mean joe and thank you for bringing it up because we all are gonna die we're hurtling on a rock in the middle of space 
none of this is real. None of it's real. Valentine's Day is made up. You know what I mean? And look at this. Love wait, is all around wait, you. Wait, wait, wait. Did you, did you just get shot by Cupid's arrow? I think you just got shot by Cupid's arrow. So Something if this year, turning around. if this year you're not in a relationship, you're still experiencing love because Cupid just shot you with an arrow. And we genuinely, in the sickest, most parasocial way, genuinely love you. So you have us. And we have you. We have you. And we have a board that we have a board. you have committed some effort and time and financial situations to. And I would literally love nothing more than to see it right now. Okay. Holy crap. Holy crapola. You know? This is... Huh. You have outdone yourself in a way that is so shocking, Andrew. This one was simple. This it is honestly about, was simple. Can you talk us through it? So what we did here, you guys, is I got some pitas. And I got them from Whole Foods. And what I did with the pita is what I, I cut it into a heart. So I just like trimmed some of the edges, cut it into a heart. I brushed it with a little bit of melted butter. A little touch of olive oil, some garlic powder, some sprinkle of basil, and some Pecorino Romano cheese in there. I whipped it up. I put it on top. I threw it in the oven at 400 for about 10, 15 minutes. Let it get it crispy and golden because a pita couldn't hold itself. And then what we have is we have some tomato sauce. We have some shredded mozz, a little bit of grated cheese. And my choice of meat today was an uncured salami because why not? I was looking for the pepperoni and I couldn't find it. So... This is what we have. We're building our own lunchable style pizza, but Valentine's edition. I know I got some comments last week about me chewing. Because no, it was the Patreon. Because the Patreon oh. begins, and I don't know how you're in the middle of eating, and I'm like, so like we're here today, and you're like, <laughs> I've learned though. I like originally couldn't take the critique that people didn't want us to chew, and then I was like, what they get now is a one bite, and then the next shot because I know that you know you have no idea what this podcast is about. Stop. Um, they get one bite, and then the next moment we're done with it. Ready? Yes. Why does this taste like it's on a breaded chicken cutlet? Like <laughs> it kind of does. It really does. It really does. This is amazing. Uh -huh. That garlic pita underneath is the perfect amount of crispy, and it could have just been a normal pita. No, it couldn't have been. You. This is the most, like, if you're going to try to recreate this one, you must. You can't cut corners. You have to make that pita exactly like that. Let's have some fun this Valentine's Day. Make this little board. It's so easy. It's kind of like your pizza pizza bagel moment, your egg English muffin pizza. You know what I mean? Your but let's refine it. Lunchable moment. This is your lunchable core. moment. I mean, what better way to end <clears throat> an episode all about love than with a labor of love like that, you know? With a little bit of a dusting of love for everyone. A heavy dusting and a topping and a coating and a slather and a smear of mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Board of love. Yeah, amazing. Literally incredible. Thank you. Oh my God, and thank you, dear listener, for being our Valentines this year. Yes. We... I, I needed it. Uh-huh. I feel the love of many. I feel the love of, of hundreds, hundreds of thousands. You know where to find us mm -hmm. across all platforms at Good Children Pod. I'm on Instagram at Joe Hedges. I'm on Instagram at Andrew Muscarella. And don't forget to do your homework. Mm -mm. Like, subscribe, comment, tell your friends, spread that good, good word. Yeah. Write a review. Give us a little five stars on Spotify. Give us. Give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. Um, and spread the love. Yeah, spread you know? the love. Don't forget to love yourself this year, and we will be seeing you on Valentine's Day. And it's okay to send out some messages on Valentine's Day to tell people that you love them. Yeah, tell your friends you love them and tell, tell us your that, family you, that love you love us. them and tell us that you love us. XO. XO. I want to know what love is. I want you to show me. I want to feel love is. I want you to hold me. Yeah. Oh. No, I'm, I'm happy. I'm in love. <laughs>